also looks like it's gonna shed. In between the. It's like the, this shed. We got a morning call. A bit earlier than expected, around 7 o'clock. But there was a cobra in the tree. But lo and behold, it's a Jameson's mamba. And it's usually quite hard to find them in these situations in a tree, isolated tree. These two guys are up in the tree, they've got the head. But it's not um, not playing easy. So let's see what they what they managed to get. It's again shedding. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Morning guys, so this morning is a very exciting morning. We're going to be talking about uh, the Eastern Jameson's Mamba. It's my first Jameson's Mamba ever, so I'm very, very excited to show you guys. It's Dendro Aspis, Jamesoni, Kamiose. And uh, these are found in the Eastern range of the Mambas. The name Mamba puts fear into a lot of people, mostly so because of the bite and how quickly things can go wrong. Jameson's Mamba was first discovered in 1845 by a Scottish zoologist and physician. Uh, later in 1943, subspecies was then derived from uh, Loveridge, which is another physician from Austria. And they actually split the two species from Eastern to Western Jameson's Mamba. So it's Dendra Aspis, Jamesoni. Jamesoni was the first one discovered and described. And then later, the subspecies was described, which is the Dendra Aspis, uh, Jamesoni Kamiose, or the Eastern Jameson's Mamba or Black-tailed Jameson's Mamba. Now, Dendra Aspis um, derives from ancient Greek, which means Dendra is a uh, tree, and then Aspis meaning shield. So back in the day, in Egyptian times, they would call a lot of snakes asps or shields when they saw them, which is a cobra, which is the big hood they saw, and they described that as a shield. So this, in theory, or in layman's terms from Latin, is tree asp or tree snake, which is exactly what the whole Dendra aspis genus is. They're very highly arboreal snakes, bar the black mamba, which is quite arboreal when young, but as soon as they get larger, the black mambas are far more terrestrial. Now, mambas are very arboreal, elapid snakes. They're highly, highly edgy, very, very fast moving snakes. They're endemic to Africa. These guys have a far smaller range than your Western uh, Jameson's mamba. These guys occur in Central Africa and East Africa, whereas the other, the Western, occurs more Central to West Africa. Now, these snakes are found primarily in rainforests, wooded jungles, highland savannas, but they'll also be found in secondary forests. So deforested areas, actually highly habituated areas with humans in them. They're very happy there because of high availability of food items. Because of their arboreal nature, it's very rare that you will actually encounter them. They're always going to be up in the trees, escaping any sort of human contact. Mambas are not generally aggressive. The black mamba has given mambas a bad reputation. Now, these are the most arboreal um, subspecies of the mambas, more so than the black mamba, even more so than the eastern and the western. They say that the eastern Jameson's mamba is the most arboreal species of them all. They feed a lot on birds, on bats, on any sort of tree squirrels, tree hyraxes, things like that. They will come down and potentially feed on mammals, but they will predominantly feed on animals up in the canopy as due to their arboreal nature. Now you can see the snake has a beautiful velvety look. It's really, really a stunning snake. The green mamba is the smallest of the species, black mamba being the biggest, and then the Jamesons being right in the middle range. Now these snakes range from anywhere between 1.5 to 2.2 meters. In the large cases, around 2.6, but those are really large specimens. Their tail accounts for 20 to 25 percent of their body length. I would say this mamba is about just short of the two meter mark, so she's already a really big specimen. I say she, but I wouldn't know. There's no sexual dimorphisms with the mamba, so the only way you would be able to sex them is by probing. The eastern green mamba is quite different from the western green mamba. They vary in color. As you can see on the top of the eastern green mamba, it's a very dull green color tapering down to more pale yellowy color and on the underside. Around their necks, they're more of a yellowy creamy color. And then hence the name, the black-tailed Jameson's Mamba. It tapers off with black edgings on the scales to the back 
and then finally ends with a completely black tail. Now, the Western Green Mamba is quite different in that the Western and Central Green Mamba where they occur is quite different in the sense that they have no black tail and it tapers off to more of a green and a yellowy color at the tail. So it's quite easy to differentiate the two. The Western Green Mamba has a far greater range than these. So these are a little bit more difficult to find. They have a far smaller range. They were first described in the mountains up in Kenya, hence the Kamiose, which is Dendro Aspis Jamesoni Kamiose. And Kamiose is derived from uh, the mountains in Kenya where it was first described. So most mambas actually in the wild are actually non-aggressive snakes. You can see she's not striking at me. She's not being too aggressive. 90% of snakes will actually try and escape before um, engaging in humans. They don't like humans. They want to stay away from us. And the only time incidents do occur is either during removal or by pure accident where a mamba such as this might be in a mango tree where, where we actually found her and villagers might be collecting fruit or whatever it might be and the mamba ha happens to be there. We've seen plenty of children climbing up trees, collecting fruit. If this guy was sitting up there, it would be a really dangerous situation. These snakes, venom, as we know from the mambas, is an extremely, extremely toxic neurotoxin. Due to their nature of being highly arboreal snakes, they need to be able to envenomate their prey quite quickly. Now, mambas are active hunters, not like your bitters and other snakes who will ambush predators. They will actively hunt their prey. They will chase down their prey, bite repeatedly and strike. They won't hold onto the prey item so that they won't hurt themselves or be injured by the, the rat or the bat or the bird, whatever they're tackling. They'll bite it repeatedly until it dies. And then once it's died, which will be in a very short period of time, they will ingest it. The venom of these snakes, like I said, is neurotoxic, has part hemotoxins in it, myotoxins, as well as vascular toxins, which is mostly found in your sea snakes. So this is a massive cocktail of venom. Envenomation from an animal like this, without treatment, you're gonna be dead between two to three hours. And if it's a long, painful process and you're a big enough person, it will take anywhere between four to six hours. There is polyvalent antivenom available for these snakes. So if you are in close enough proximity to a hospital, the antivenom is highly successful and works very well. As dangerous as these snakes might be, they also have predators and they also get eaten. The main predators of mambas, or specifically Jameson's mambas, will be your eagles, your martial eagle, your Congo snake eagle, as well as your mongoose and honey badgers. So it's always good to know, you know, these guys are killers, but there's always something higher up in the food chain. So a really beautiful snake and I think it's time to release her back into the jungle. So thanks for watching. Cheers guys.